The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Acts chapter number 13, verse number 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. And he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto this people. And we declare to you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made to the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, and that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Note carefully this verse. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid to his fathers and saw corruption. I'd like to call your attention to verse 36 where the Bible said, David served his own generation. If I could say in one sentence what my ministry is about, by the grace of God, it is serving this generation. As I've said to you before a number of times lately, there are many, 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 many good ministers of God that have gone on before us. But some of them lived 100 years ago. Some lived 200, 300 years ago. And they served their generation. But the issues that they faced a hundred years ago in no way are to be compared with what you're looking at right now. In this generation of 2017, you are watching things transpire at an unbelievable pace. I marvel at how quickly things are happening and how quickly Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. So the message I want to preach you this morning is a kind of a comparative message. But I hope and pray that it's a message that will speak down into our souls and into our heart. There is a dark land, and that land is India. India is one of the oldest civilizations on the face of this earth. So old that Adolf Hitler sent his people into India to research the Aryan race, along with Tibet and other places. India is ancient. India is the birthplace of Brahmism and Hinduism and Buddhism. And the birthplace of all of that is ancient Babylon. Hinduism has many gods. The Hindu trinity is Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the sustainer, and Shiva is the destroyer and recreator. There's a statue of Shiva at CERN, Switzerland, and that statue of Shiva is inside a ring where he is dancing the Nataraj. The Nataraj is a reference to a Hindu concept of what is to be, what is destroyed will be brought back into existence, possibly in a different form. But CERN, Switzerland, of all places, where they have this huge Hadron Collider, and it is here that they chose to set this up out in front, showing you that there is a connection between the high science of CERN, Switzerland, a connection between that and the occult world. And there is because they are seeking what is called singularity at CERN, Switzerland. And singularity is another way of saying the force that motivates the life principle as we understand it, what is going on. You and I know the day, today, if you are a born again believer and a Bible believer, that the force that animates the life principle as we understand it today is the power and life of Almighty God. There is no life outside of Him. All life comes from the life giver. And Jehovah of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the new. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Amen. And the Bible said he's the light that shineth every man that cometh into the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Brahmism was born in Babylon, the seat of all idolatry. Nimrod was famous for Babylon. Nimrod was the first one to bring together a coordinated effort of all mankind to come against the truth of the revealed Word of God. Nimrod, the Bible said, was a hunter for souls. 
My friend, he was a hunter before the Lord. And what he hunted was not deer and elk. He was hunting the souls of men. So you can trace it all the way back to the beginning that this thing is about seeking the souls of mankind in opposition to the revealed truth of God. God chose to call a man out of Ur of the Chaldees. In plainer words, out of Babylon, out of that area of this occultism. He chose to call one man out of that and his family, the man's family was idolaters. But the man that he called was Abram. And when he called him out of there, as he followed the light that God gave him, God changed his name to Abraham and said, you're going to be the father of many nations. Hi, Father Abraham. Every one of us today, if we are born again by the grace of God, the same faith Abraham had, we have. For he is the father of the faithful, according to the apostle in the book of Galatians. So my friend, he was called out of that thing. The religion of Hinduism took thousands of years to develop as it is in its present state today. It is a caste system with tiers of people that are born into a certain level in society. And they're born into that level, they live out that level, and they die in that level. The highest is the, the Brahmin class or the royal class, the lowest, the untouchables. The untouchables are those that can do nothing to change their lot in life. It is fatalism. It is fatalism in the face where the Bible says, and such were some of you, but you've been washed, you've been cleansed, you've been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Man will condemn you and give you no hope. But the hope is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. True hope, real hope in a living God. Neither male nor female, bond nor free, black or white. All these distinctions are gone in the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says in the book of Acts, He hath made of one blood all of mankind. There is in India, the capital Calcutta, a place called the Black Hole. This is one of the worst places on the face of the earth. You can go back into the 1800s. You can read about the black hole. You'll find that they used it to put prisoners of war in. They would pack it so full that they couldn't even sit down. They would suffocate in the black hole. The black hole therefore represents a place of no hope. To be cast into the black hole is like when you Dante wrote his Inferno. And you can look and it says, all who enter in give up hope. If you take hope away from a man, you've robbed him of his life. For without hope, there is no life. But the Bible says that we are looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the personification of hope. If you've got the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got the hope of God. But Calcutta, India is a dark land and there is a place called the Black Hole. David said that I have been cast into an horrible pit, but he brought me up out of it. He brought me up out of this horrible pit. There is a group of people, part of the Hindu religion in India called the Agora, A-G-O-R-I. Sometimes if you do a little research, you'll see some folks over there that look like they have white powder all over their faces. They are, they, they're horrible to look at. If you only knew, if you could only understand, if you could only perceive, how debased and degraded that these people are. It would blow your mind. It would literally make you sick if you read what they do. If you're willing to read something that in your mind you never imagined in your life that a human being could do. But these people practice this religion every day of their lives. What's happening, preacher? They are destroying the image of God that God put in you. Every last one of us in this house today have been born into the image of God. Not fully, not completely. The image was lost, but Christ came and restored that image. He brought back what the first Adam lost. And that image of God is what makes you different from everything else, including Arab, including angel, cherubim, seraphim. In plain words, you have worth. You have a reason to live. And Satan wants to degrade you. Don't you see how pagan our society is becoming? Don't you see what's happening out there? What's happening, preacher? 
They are being reduced to animals. There's a reason for that. They want to reduce them to animals so they make no difference between the two because this new religion coming down the pike makes no religion. You are an animal as far as the world's concerned. But I, praise God, have the image of God in me and it cannot be taken away. The black hole does it and so does the agori. The agori, remember that, A-G-O-R-I. Look up that word and it'll give you an education like you wouldn't believe when you see what's happening there. Hinduism is a system of caste. It's a caste system. They live under what's called a karma. You hear the word karma thrown around all the time here in this country. Karma this, karma that, karma this, karma that. Karma and Hinduism are one and the same. In plain words, it's part of Hinduism. It cannot be divorced from it. Karma is a system of living out a certain karma, hopes that you can come back in some form, something in the future, be reincarnated in a better life, and something, and hopefully that you can improve your lot. So therefore that gives them a reason to try to live better. And this is how that you control people. It gives them a reason to try to live better. If through a, ser a series of birth, death, birth, death, birth, death, reincarnation, if they finally get it right, they will be elevated to the place of a mukti. Mukti means that you become one with the universe. This is all Hinduism. This is also a New Age movement. This is also a universal spirit that people receive. And this country is being baptized in a universal spirit. Everybody thinks alike today. If you are a true born again Christian, you don't think like they do. And that's why they label you, they call you a hater. They're going to kick you out if you don't march to their tune, join their group, think like they say to think, then you don't have this universal spirit. Praise God. Let me tell you something, folks. God put his Holy Spirit in me when he saved me. And if you're born again today, the Holy Ghost is in you. They don't know that. They've never known him and they never will until they're born again. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse 11 says this, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, and ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Washed, sanctified, justified. That's pretty good. If I can be washed, sanctified, and justified, I'm in pretty good shape. Amen. Not by men, but by God. And he hath washed you, it says in Revelation 1, 5, in his own precious blood. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will wash away all your sins. It will wash away the old nature. It will cleanse you, purify you, and justify you in the sight of God. Preacher, how do I get the blood to wash me? Bow on your knees, accept Christ in your heart, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Then you're washed in the blood. Amen. Whatever else follows after that takes its own place. But the blood comes first. In India, they've got a special god called Kali. K-A-L-I. This is quite a remarkable thing for a Western civilization to even understand what I'm talking about. In those days, in the 1800s, caravans would move from one town to the other. And the reason they did is because they had to have protection. They watched out for themselves, for highway robbers and so forth. But these people were so subtle that they would join in with the group, be accepted by the people, the worshippers of Kali, K-A-L-I. They would go join in with the caravan. They would go with them maybe days into their trip. And then at night, while the rest of them slept, these monsters would rise up and they would murder wholesale all the people around them. And they were doing it for their god, Kali. Did you know that in New York City, they projected an image of Kali on the side of one of those buildings up there. Kali is that monster that you see the hideous face and the long tongue sticking straight out and down. That's Kali. That's a bloodthirsty monster. That is one of the gods of the Hindu. Bloodthirsty monster. And yet in this country, we've got people today who think it's cool to wear images of Kali around on their clothing or they have placards to Kali. Kali is a monster, folks. Believe me, the people that worshipped Kali were called Thuggies. T-H-U-G-G-I-E-S. Thuggy. 
This is where we get the word thug. How many of you have ever heard the word thug? Now you know where it came from. It came from Cali. And we all know that a thug is somebody that needs to be locked up behind bars. First of all, they need the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to get them saved. Amen. Sometimes, though, you got to lock them up before they'll listen to what you have to say. Thank God for the missionaries that go to the prisons and go in behind the wall and preach to the men and to the women that are locked up. That's a wonderful ministry. That's the difference between a thug under Cali and a born-again believer under our Lord Jesus Christ. That caste system has the Brahmin, which is the royal priest, and it also has the untouchable, which is the lowest part. In the, one of the traditions of Hinduism is that they will take when a dead body is to be burned, they cremate most of them, that the wife, the widow of that dead husband, she will immolate herself. She will burn herself to death on the funeral pyre of her husband. When the British went into India in the 1800s and they saw the thugs under Cali, then they saw the Sute, S-U-T-T-E, I think it's spelled. They were horrified at the traditions of this country and how cheap human life was. But the, this, these widows would burn themselves to death. Finally, the British put a stop to it. But they say that in certain areas of India and other areas, it's still practiced that the widow is required to burn herself to death because her husband is gone. It's almost like they're saying, your husband owns you. You belong to him, that you have no life outside of him. But let me tell you this morning who owns me. The Bible said I was bought with a price. My Lord Jesus Christ owns me. And he doesn't ask me to burn myself to death. Oh, no, 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 no. He wants me to live for him. He wants Christ to be formed inside of me. There's a difference, folks. Religion brings death. Christ brings life. Amen. Let me tell you. If you've ever met the Lord Jesus Christ, it will show all over you, for you're going to be full of life. Amen. All Satan can give you is a masquerade of life, which ultimately is death. He can't give you life. Christ can give you life. Amen. In America, religion died. Do you remember a few years ago, they came out and said, God is dead. Remember that? I wonder how they knew that. Maybe their God died. Maybe he did. If your God dies, it's kind of like the Old Testament. When they, when they, when they stole Laban's teraphim, they carried his gods off. And Laban got real upset because he went out to worship one day and his gods were gone. That's the truth, folks. I'm telling you the truth. And he got upset and he chased the caravan down and he said, now let me tell you something. This is the dirtiest deed that could be done to anybody. You stole my gods. I'd hate to have a god that I had to put up somewhere and lock up and keep safe from somebody stealing it. I mean, folks, it is comical on one hand. It really is. That shows you the ignorance of paganism. Shows you how It shows you how superstitious and ignorant they are. But he did find his God, put his God in his hand, and he carried it back and set his God back where his God was on. And then he could bow down before his God, and he rescued his God. And there he was with his what a thing. What a thing. We worship a God you can't see. We worship a God you can't touch. We worship a God that can't be stolen. The Bible said, He that keepeth this will neither slumbers nor sleep. The God that we worship is from everlasting to everlasting. The God that I worship was here long before anything else was here. And He'll be here when it's all gone. I don't have to protect Him. He protects me. I don't give Him life. He gives me life. Amen. You go, you go ahead and try to cast the Holy Ghost out of me. Try it one time. Amen. You can cast a demon out of somebody, but try to cast the Holy Ghost out of them. If they're a born-again believer, you're wasting your time. Amen. He is not subject to the laws of man. We are subject to his laws. And so his God was stolen. So the dead religion in America imported Hinduism. And by importing Hinduism, it repackaged it in a Western format and called it the New Age Movement. The New Age Movement, now you say, well, now that's out there. No, 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 it's in here. The New Age Movement is in the church house big time. 
and the New Age movement is the foundation. It is the basis for the one world religion. For as far as the New Ager is concerned, any God goes. It's okay. It doesn't make any difference. Just as long as you got yourself plugged in to this universal spirit. Do you know that you live in an age today when people will be looking at a phone and they'll walk off the side of a cliff. They'll walk into a pool. They'll walk right out in front of a car. You say, well, it's hard to believe it happens. It happens every day. Hey, you live in a time today when people are so, so encapsulated with themselves. We live in a self, narcissistic generation. All about me and the many forms that I take. So, we have preachers today that cater to that. And they get up in front of the people and they, be, they preach self-love. Folks, let me tell you something right now. Your problem is not, not enough love for yourself. That's not our problem. The Apostle Paul said one of the things that marked the end day is this, that they'll be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, so forth. Your problem is not a lack of self-love. That is your problem if you've got self-love. If you'd ever loved the Lord Jesus Christ like you ought to, love God with all your heart and all your soul, everything else would take its rightful place. Your problem is not a lack of self-love. That is the problem if you're full of self-love. But the New Age movement is all about self and self-love. The New Age, God is not the creator, God's the creation for their pantheistic. And so part of that is the evolutionary God of metaphysics and the occult world. The origin of evolution is Babylon. And Charles Darwin, when he came out with his origin of the species, they dropped half of the title of that that had to do with favored races. Charles Darwin was a racist to the bone. I don't know if I believe, check me out. Go home and do a little reading into it and you'll be surprised what you find out. But you'll also find out this. You'll find out that the foundation of evolution is a spiritual thing. You'll find out that it's connected with the occult world. Therefore, anyone who's embraced evolution without question, whether you know it or not, you have embraced the spirit of evolution. And the spirit of evolution is the spirit of this age. And it's the spirit of rebellion against God. And it is an occult spirit, a metaphysical, a supernatural, paranormal spirit. And that is the spirit that's going to prepare you to receive the Antichrist. The Apostle Paul warned the church at Thessalonica. He said, if you can receive another letter or another spirit, as from us, words bring spirits. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Christ is the living Word. He's the Word incarnate. To receive Christ is to receive the Holy Ghost. Words are powerful things. You're listening right now to someone giving you words. I either give you the words of life or I give you a lie. I'm afraid that so many places all they get is a lie. So evolution is a horrible, horrible foundation. One of the things about the New Age movement is the identity of Christ. He's called an ascended master. In Sunday school, I talked about Notovich. Nikolai Notovich, a Russian, who said that Christ went to a monastery when he was a boy. And in that monastery, he was instructed by a monk about how he could be part of the initiation. He could learn the great truths through the occult world. And then they recorded all of this and showed the books and what have you to Notovich. He went back and wrote a book and published it in 1894. Immediately the Christians rose up in arms and said, hold on, you're a liar and a deceiver. They went to India. They went to the same monastery. They went to the same monks. And the monks that they went to said, we don't know who you're talking about. We've never seen Notovich. We didn't show him any ancient documents. This is all a fabrication. But he published his book and made his money. And people to this day believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was nothing in the world more than an ascended master, that he was the Christ that had an anointing come upon him, that he's not the true and living God. And when you talk to these people and all these other religions, have you ever wonder why they don't accept Christ? Did you know that there's a billion, 1,000 million Hindus on this earth? Do you know how many Muslims are on this earth? Did you know that the Muslims do not believe that God had a son? Did you know that the Muslims believe that Jesus is a Mahdi? He's coming back and he's going to destroy the cross. He's going to come back and he's going to say that Christianity is wrong. It's the wrong religion. That he's a Muslim. And Christ is going to come back and he's going to convert the whole world to Islam. That's their Jesus. 
That's not the Jesus of the Bible. You've got to be awful careful today, folks. This is your generation. You've got to be careful which Jesus you believe in. Do you believe in the Jesus of the Bible? Do you believe in the Jesus of the rest of the world? You have to make a choice. The Muslim is very strong when he says, God has no son. Allah is one. I say back to him, the Shema from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number six. Hear you, O Israel. The Lord your God is one Lord. You better believe he's one God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's one God. But so they have it, and so they're going to say it. There's no place for sin in this New Age movement. The principle of yin-yang dominates the religious thinking in America. In other words, we're all in it together. Don't judge me. If it feels good, do it. I can go to church, and I can be religious. I can be very, very religious from my cafeteria religion, and I can sleep around with anybody I want to. That's what gets preached today. And that's the kind of stuff that's coming out of the Well, the reason it is is because they got the same spirit. The word sin hasn't been mentioned in some of these churches in decades. They won't mention it. And the reason they won't is because sin has no part in yin-yang. Yin-yang is good, bad, white, black, feminine, masculine, making up one total. You need both to make the total. So you need to be both good and bad. The spirit of this age is, I'm good, but I'm bad. I do this as good, but I do that that's bad. That's the way people think. Am I right? Yes. They may not be able to define it that way. They may not know what yin and yang is, but that's the spirit they've received. That's the new age spirit. Notice also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.